Coming up, the Mets and Dodgers finish their series and borderline playoff teams battle for wins. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. What's going on, everybody? You are listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts taking you from game to game for all the updates in last night's Major League Baseball action, getting you completely up to date on everything that you need to know. I'm your host, Daniela Bruce, and thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Both the Orioles and Guardians need wins to make the playoffs, and they faced them off in yesterday's biggest game. The biggest game. The Baltimore Orioles and Cleveland Guardians both enter September desperate for wins with the playoffs in sight. And it was Baltimore who came out on top in last night's matchup. Lockdown Orioles is within two games of calling his team a playoff team, while Lockdown Guardians is looking for any help Cleveland can get as it tries to hold on to its division lead. How about back-to-back shutouts? And how about five consecutive series wins for the Baltimore Orioles? Connor Newcomb here, host of Locked On Orioles. Your final score, O's three, Guardians nothing. As the O's take two out of three in Cleveland and move to just a game and a half back of the Toronto Blue Jays for the final wild card spot. And again, it was just incredible pitching from the Orioles. And this time, Kyle Bradish was the star. And after he threw eight scoreless innings on Friday night in Houston, he backs it up with seven scoreless innings in Cleveland on Thursday. Just dazzled once again. The Orioles' bullpen shuts it down. They get three solo homers, Mullins, Santander, and Mountcastle. Gunnar Henderson makes some awesome plays, and the O's win the ballgame. This starting pitching staff, with five names that many people may not know, is the reason the O's are in this playoff race. They continued it on Thursday, and I'll recap it all coming up on Friday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. Cleveland Guardians lose. Again. They don't score a run. Again. Their two aces, McKenzie and Bieber, in their last four starts, are the Guardians are combined 0-4. They've gone 2-5 and since their two-game sweep of the Padres. The offense has been virtually non-existent. We'll get into that on tomorrow's Lockdown Guardians, so go check that out. Uh, but hey, the rosters are expanding, so let's go get some offensive reinforcement. Guardians did that by adding Ernie Clement. That's right, Ernie Clement, who is one of the 10 worst hitters in baseball by one runs created plus a metric that takes all of the offensive stats and combines them into one easy-to-understand number. Uh, you know, they were lucky because they had two of the worst 10 hitters in baseball with Straw and Clement, and now they get them both back because that's how you help your team. If you're feeling like me, a little frustrated, a little annoyed, go check out Lockdown Guardians. We'll have you covered for what is barely holding on to First place in the AL Central, Cleveland Guardians. The Boston Red Sox put a dagger in the hearts of Texas Rangers fans on Thursday night after Boston stormed back from down five in the eighth to walk off. Lockdown Red Sox and Lockdown Rangers recap both sides of a roller coaster finish. Somehow, some way, the Red Sox were able to hit with the bases loaded, push runners across the plate with nobody out, and Rob Schneider played hero for the Red Sox in a walk-off win over the Rangers on Thursday. Hey, it's Lauren from Lockdown Red Sox, and somehow, some way, the Red Sox did it. They learned how to hit with runners in scoring position. They loaded the bases in the ninth inning, down 8-5, and they ended up winning 9-8. Things got a little dicey in, in the beginning of the inning. When J.D. Martinez struck out, you're thinking, oh, here we go. They're not going to be able to win with the game right there at their fingertips. Rob Refschneider scorched a single down the third baseline and was able to score Raphael Devers for the exciting walk-off win to kick off September on a high note. I will break down this entire game for you, including Rich Hill's outing, which could have been better, on our next episode of Locked on Red Sox. I don't know exactly what's in the Geneva Convention, but whatever it is, the Rangers absolutely violated it by giving up a five-run lead they had going into the bottom of the eighth inning in a 9-8 to eight loss. I'm Bryce Patrick, host of the Locked on Rangers podcast, and I am fed up with these one-run losses. This is the 28th one-run loss of the season. 
for the Texas Rangers. They have 10 wins and 28 losses in these stupid one-run games. Five-run lead heading into the bottom of the eighth inning. But they couldn't do anything with it. Matt Moore, terrible. Jose the Clerk, not good enough. Jonathan Hernandez, absolutely horrendous. Four hits, three walks in his one-third of an inning in the ninth inning. Had a just fine three-run lead heading into that ninth inning. The Clues should be able to hold a three-run lead and not give up four innings in the bottom of, four runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. This was just absolutely inexcusable. The top of the order did everything it could. Three hits and a walk for Marcus Simeon. Two hits, two RBIs from Corey Seager, and two hits and a pair of walks from Nathaniel Lowe. What more do you need from this offense in a day where the starting pitcher, Glenn Otto, was fantastic? Eight strikeouts, a career high in major leagues for him. Five innings of just three-run ball. Jesus Tinoco worked two shutout innings, but Matt Moore, Jose the Clerk, and Jonathan Hernandez could not combined to hold a five-run lead in two innings of work. Absolutely inexcusable. Absolutely ridiculous, and I am so sick of this freaking baseball team. For more of my sickness, check out the Locked On Rangers podcast. The Mariners knew a sweep of a bad Tigers team would go a long way in trying to lock up one of those AL wildcard spots, and Seattle got the job done on Thursday to go into the last month of the season on a high note. Our Locked On Mariners host highlights just how big these wins are for Seattle's chances. Well, mission accomplished in Detroit, as they were supposed to, the Mariners get a sweep of the Tigers. This is Tidy Gonzalez, host of the Locked On Mariners podcast. And the M's defeat Detroit by a score of 7 to nothing on Thursday afternoon at Comerica Park with ease. They jump all over Eduardo Rodriguez for six of their seven total runs as an offense, with five of those being earned, including back-to-back home runs from Julio Rodriguez and Ty France. And I'm pretty sure that Julio ball still has not landed as we speak. Logan Gilbert goes six strong innings, strikes out nine, walks just one, and gives up just two hits. Now, some of that, of course, is... You know, uh, the product of facing a Tigers offense, the worst offense in Major League Baseball. But Gilbert looked very good today. And then big congratulations to Matthew Boyd, who makes his Mariners debut for his childhood team and goes one, two, three with a trio of ground outs in his first outing as an M. We will be talking about this game more on the Locked On Mariners post game show. Be sure to join us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. See you then. Coming up, the Diamondbacks shut out the Brewers and the Mets win their series with the Dodgers. This is Locked On Game to Game. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. BetOnline is also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check on all of your favorite sports events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm Daniela Bruce, and thank you for making Locked On Game to Game your first listen every weekday. Zach Gallen may have gotten the headlines lately, but another Arizona starter stepped up for yesterday's best performance. The best performance. Hold up, hold up. The Arizona Diamondbacks bounced back and beat a Milwaukee Brewers team struggling to stay in it on Thursday. After a shutout for Arizona, Locked On Diamondbacks gives praise to the starter who led the way. D-backs bounced back from their shellacking against the Philadelphia Phillies to take down the Milwaukee Brewers 5-0. Miller Thomas of Locked On Diamondbacks here. The story of the game tonight was the pitching, specifically Merrill Kelly, because we all know about Zach Allen's scoreless streak, but Merrill Kelly has been just as locked in recently. Seven innings, no earned run, seven strikeouts for a Brewers team that is desperate. They are fighting for a wild card spot, and the D-backs absolutely dominated today. Christian Walker got it going with a two-run shot in the first inning. Perdomo tacked on another in the second, and then Josh Rojas delivered tacos in the sixth inning. Great performance by the lineup. Great performance by Merrill Kelly. Even a very good performance by Caleb Smith, who I usually have a lot of criticism for, but not tonight because he was able to get the job done. So great job by the D-backs in game one. Uh, They're probably not in the wild card hunt, but 
look, if you look at the wild card standings, they're the second team out right after the Milwaukee Brewers, which is way better than I would have expected at this point in the season. So thank you, D-Back, for continuing to make this season interesting. And for more coverage on the Diamondbacks, check out the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. The New York Mets won the regular season series with the Dodgers by winning on Thursday night, but nobody was thinking about the regular season with the two best records in the league on the line. Our Locked On Mets host recaps how the final game between these two contenders played out. The New York Mets have won their season series against the Los Angeles Dodgers by winning on Thursday. Chris Bassett threw the ball well. The bullpen was solid, and Francisco Lindor had himself one amazing game. This is Rob Ficklestein, the host of Locked On Mets, and on the show tomorrow, I will discuss everything that we saw in this series against the Dodgers, how the path to the NL East title is now pretty wide open as the Mets schedule gets a lot easier from here. And we'll also do a little bit of talk about prospects for our Friday Farm Report. Make sure you check out tomorrow's episode of Locked On Mets. The Chicago White Sox haven't played like a team who wants to make a run for the playoffs as of late. Chicago series win was the first for the South Siders in more than two weeks. Our Locked On White Sox host tells you what finally went Chicago's way. The Chicago White Sox took care of business on Thursday afternoon, beating the Kansas City Royals 7-1 on the South Side. Hey, I'm Nick Murawski from Locked On White Sox. Johnny Cueto bounced back and gave the White Sox an outstanding performance. The bullpen for the Sox was also fantastic. White Sox hit multiple home runs in the game and won a series for the first time in a long time. No time for rest as the Minnesota Twins are in town for three games starting Friday night. For more, tune in to Locked on White Sox. The Colorado Rockies ended a rough stretch of games against some of the best teams in baseball with a loss in Atlanta on Thursday. With nothing more to lose and an easier schedule ahead, Locked On Rockies is just happy to be done with the hard part. Rock On Rockies fans, Paul Holden here from the Locked On Rockies podcast. Well, the onslaught of really good pitching finally comes to an end. The Rockies have been going up against some of the best in the business, some uh, really deep playoff contenders. And they only end up with just the one or the two wins. Actually, they both they get a win against uh, the Braves. They get a win against the Mets. But hey, now they can move on to the Reds. And uh, hopefully we get a more look at the prospects and we can see more. Chad Cool was looking good for a bit. And then unfortunately, one bad inning sinks it all for the Rockies. We'll be breaking it all down right here on Locked on Rockies. That's all today for Locked On Game to Game MLB. Thank you again for making Locked On Game to Game your first listen every weekday. Now that you're done here, make your second listens Locked On MLB and your team's local Locked On podcast. I'm Daniela Bruce, and this has been Locked On Game to Game.